International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. Spencer, it's so nice being out here uh, with you. Uh, you told me that this was going to happen. We did a uh, documentary already that I'm in, and you came to my home and interviewed me, and it was a wonderful. Uh, and how long have you been, uh, for instance, in, in, in Oakland? Have you, were you born here, raised here, or what? Well, you know, it's just such an honor to be here standing with the great Jerry Lange oh, in front of the mural, Alice Street Mural Project, uh, uh -huh. uh, here at Allison 14th, you know, downtown Oakland. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, boy, it's, a, it's such an honor, again, that you participated in this project. And I've Thank gotten you. to learn so much about your life and, you know, the life of your kids, Michael being involved and everything yeah. as well. It's just been such a joy. Um, well, you know, and it's just a pleasure to be in the company of such people as Destiny Muhammad. You know, I know her. She played at one of my book signings and her husband, who's just this marvelous guy that uh, I see every day and we say hello. And, and uh, but it's the people that they're here. And I think these painters are outstanding because it looks like everybody here has a soul. And that's very hard to capture, but it seems like they've captured it. I think you're right. You know, the, um, the two painters, uh, Desi and mm -hmm. Poncho, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have been working together for, I think, uh, about, well, in total, uh, the organization that they, they have together, Community Rejuvenation Project, yeah, yeah. has been around for about 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they've done murals all over Oakland, mm -hmm, Richmond, mm -hmm, Berkeley. Yeah. Um, you know, and like you said, yeah. they really kind of bring the soul yeah, out in each yeah. of the people. And today, yeah, you're actually uh, being painted up on the wall. Uh, that's right, and I'm so proud to be included here because, you know, uh, first of all, we've got a, a wonderful history here in Oakland. You know, I was, my grandmother came to West Oakland, as what most black people came from New Orleans to work on that Southern Pacific. Our, my, my grandfather, you know, those people did. And what happened was uh, we were down in West Oakland. We thought that was all there was to Oakland because uh, we never really ventured. We would see Broadway. Oh, we didn't really want to venture aboard, above Broadway because we, there were no black people that lived up here. You didn't live above Broadway. You more or less, uh, West Oakland was our place, and we were very happy there with Defemory Park and the wonderful things that's, uh, that we had. Uh, 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 you, if California was the kind of state where you can't find a young black kid that wasn't happy growing up here. Because mm. we didn't have the Jim Crow, we'd heard about it, you know. So we have a very special uh, uh, thing. And uh, when I heard former Mayor Ron Dellums talk one day, one day down at the Senior Center, he was talking about how happy he was to, when, to get, when he got up to Broadway, he, got, he would panic as a kid. You know, I, can't, I know I can't, I can't wait to run back to... Uh, uh, down to Defermory Park and play, which is where we grew up. And so all of us were happy, happy kids. So I hear that um, it was a happy time and that also there were some kind of restrictions in terms of movement. They were. And I think that's been really interesting in terms of this uh, mural and documentary project is learning about kind of Oakland history, um, you know, and really kind of learning about the different it is. ways in which people were in a sense restricted. That's right. And um, that's a, actually a big theme of this whole project is about kind of displacement yes. of different peoples throughout the Oakland history. And, and how we handled it was it very important. And so uh, talking about that, for instance, uh, it, it turned out that from Ron Dellums, I learned that uh, black people weren't welcome above Broadway. So that's why we felt uncomfortable. We didn't know that. Um. And so, but uh, there, was a, uh, there was a group of uh, uh, people and one of the uh, uh, it was a, not a fraternity, but a private organization of whites who once a year would allow us above, uh, you know, Broadway, because we had to go into the place which is now Jeffrey's, owned by a black guy. And I thought, well, how great to have him own that center of that whole corner now. And it's a black establishment, because that was this uh, a, a terrific uh, private club of very rich white men, and they sold it. But it, it's interesting that that uh, Jeffrey Pete bought that building. And I went there as a child, five years old, to the Christmas parties that white people gave for the young black kids of West Oakland. Mm. And I would sit there, and they gave us gifts and gave us dinner. And I remember when going to Jeffrey's, I suddenly realized, I looked in the, the, around the building, I said, this is where I used to come uh, for the Christmas parties every year. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. That kind of thing, it's a real... Now, what years was that around? Well, well that's around, let's see, it would be 1930. Because I was born in 1925, and so 1930s, 
would be around the time that we would, would come up here and they and they give you the whole Christmas thing and give you a present to take home and and um, it, it was just a Oakland what I love about Oakland was it wasn't there was a lot of racism here that I found out about after the fact which means they hid it pretty well because I did not know I was black as a child growing up in West Oakland. I did not know that that was the only place that we could play because we never wanted to leave. We loved each other, we had fun. And I think, I hope somebody's going to write a book. I wrote a few things in my book about it. How, how what a happy childhood we had because we didn't know. Nobody went up and, I mean, you could, didn't, we weren't given a special faucet to drink out of and you couldn't, you know, but there were areas that you didn't move in but you weren't even aware of it. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really grow up feeling deprived at all. And that I can say about Oakland. But after that, I realized when I grew up that they had all kind of restrictions. Well, along those lines, I know that um, you, when we had talked before, you mm -hmm. told me about the, the work that you had done around mm -hmm. um, the, um, at that time, the uh, housing uh, discrimination that was happening That's right. in Oakland and working to change that on a statewide level and that you were helping to, in a sense, organize around that, that, yeah. that those issues. Right. And working well, with some of the leaders on well, that. Well, we had... Um, the first black assemblyman was Byron Rumford. And the first thing Byron Rumford did, um, that he, because he knew, see, he was grown and he knew what was going on. Uh, uh, I had just gone, he was, uh, I had just graduated from college and I was working for him part time in different things. And then when he got elected as the first black assemblyman, first thing he did was uh, fair housing. At fair housing and the uh, uh, and uh, uh, the workforce, he did the uh, those those two particular areas was concentrated on getting jobs for black people and getting housing for black people. Mm -hmm. See, because that's that, that's where that's where the the critical things were. Everybody was relegated down to West Oakland, but when Byron with Byron's legislation, they got to move up, and now there are black people in Piedmont, black people in Montclair, and we can live anywhere we want. Well, I started with Byron. That was one of my first jobs. I knew him as a child when he first took over. He was the first black um, uh, 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 pharmacist in the city of, uh, of uh, Berkeley, actually. He came from Berkeley, and I had moved to Berkeley when we were five years old. So I grew up in Berkeley, even though I, I was born and uh, uh, lived here five years in West Oakland. So, and I always loved West Oakland, because that was my first home that I knew about. But yeah, Byron Rumford changed the, the whole uh, uh, thing in housing and jobs for black people, and that is what he's famous for. And uh, there is a documentary out on him at the same time they're doing, you're doing your documentary. Byron's just going to come out. So it looks like Oakland is getting uh, the attention it should get. You know, they give, the, give us a bad rap about all the crime and all of these things. But there was no crime in West Oakland. Everybody knew each other. Everybody loved each other. We had great teachers. Uh, and the great thing was, and I'm glad to see that this is so interracial and integrated because that's who I grew up around Italians I grew anyone that couldn't speak the language that came here first they started in West Oakland but then they all got out the Chinese Japanese Italians Polish whatever you were only black people didn't get out of Oakland their kids went on to learn English in the public schools and of course were able to get good jobs and the first thing they did was move their parents out so they moved out and got into the various neighborhoods around. But we loved, uh, uh, we were not noticing this. You're not gonna notice that kind of thing till you grow up and you realize that uh, we were the only ones that still are down in West Oakland. Those big old Victorians are still there. And the same black people, the families never sold that property. They always left it to their children. So there's some very beautiful uh, Victorian homes still in West Oakland. You should go down and see them. They keep their streets clean, their gardens. But you'd see the media, which is what my favorite th place to talk about uh, uh, that doesn't give us the true picture is you only hear about the murders or you only hear about the bad things or they'll show you the, the, the places where the houses are not well kept or the streets. But there are streets in Oakland that are absolutely gorgeous, kept clean, people know each other, and now it's being coming integrated again because whites are moving down into West Oakland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such an interesting history the city has, yeah. and um, I think a lot of, uh, it's been such an inspiring part of this whole uh, mural project to mm -hmm. like deep dig into that history That's of right. Oakland and learn more about how different populations of people have come to Oakland at different times over the 
course yes. of its uh, you know 150 year history. Right. Um, and then learning about kind of different key points to highlight within this right. uh, mural project. Mm -hmm. and, and the diversity has been a big aspect of it being here on 14th mm -hmm. and Alice Streets in downtown Oakland. That's right. We really wanted to um, reflect a lot of the diversity that you see um, yes. as you walk down these streets. Right. And now you live actually yeah. right here on Alice right. Street. I do. And how long have you been in the well, neighborhood? Well, I've been in the area, and I love, I'll, I'll tell you the story of how I got in this area, too, because I went to my son, uh, Mike, uh, who lives across the street from me now. He said, Mom, be sure, because he was, uh, he was uh, actually director and head of the... Uh, which was the Center for the Arts, no, not the Center for the Arts, but right next to that is uh, that whole uh, building, which is named now Malanga Cuscalard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, see, in that, that particular thing, Michael was the, the director of that. So he was telling me the history of this thing. He said, Mom, walk on that side of the street because there's some great houses there. And I found this house and uh, the, with the gate on it. And I walked through, and the man came out that owned, owned the place, and he said, Oh, uh, hello. And he said, uh, did you come to look at the apartment that we have? You know, and I said, oh, you have an apartment available? And uh, his name was Robert McCollum. And turns out that his family had a big ice cream shop that everybody knew uh, in, the, in the area. And uh, he went to Berkeley High and turned out he graduated in 42 the first class of 42. I was in the second class of 42. No kidding. You know, kidding. And that's how I got on Alice. He said, oh, you've got this place. And we became great friends. And he now has moved, sold that place. And he's now uh, living in a senior uh, place that's just gorgeous, you know. Uh, so it's, but he was a wonderful guy. He was friends. He would come down to dinner, uh, have my kids, uh, uh, Mike, uh, Ted from the Love Boat came up mm -hmm. for dinner. And uh, of course, he wanted to meet him. We invited him to dinner. So it's been a happy time here mm -hmm. and we never felt uh, really uh, deeply any kind of discrimination at all although I was made to go asked to go down to uh, Burbank junior high rather than which was three miles I had to walk every day mm -hmm. uh, instead of Willard and my mother finally said no 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 you're not gonna do this next year you're gonna so my mother went up and demanded that they could because they had you know they they take the boundaries and change them so you can't come up mm -hmm. but uh, they couldn't do it we were then moving above uh, the neighbor in the same area where I was supposed to eligible to go to Willard Junior High so I finished at Willard Junior High and there were only seven black kids in that school wow. all the rest were at Burbank so there was but those are just rare instances where you felt oh gee there's a little discrimination here you know but when I got to Willard I made friends and what I love about Berkeley and Oakland and it's almost the same one's a college town of course but we all grew up with every race there was these were immigrants that came here and they couldn't speak the language so they always lived where they could afford to live which turned out to be with black people mm -hmm. so we made lifetime friendships with these people mm -hmm. and Nicholas Petrus who was one of the most famous senators ever went to dinner with Nick Petrus one night and, and he said well I was born in in West Oakland too Jerry huh. remember you know we, we were Greeks and I said I bet you I, I bet you weren't born far down as I was and he said where were you born I said I said I was born at uh, 7th and uh, Union Streets he said I was born at 8th and Wood I said oh that you win that was way down <laughs> And that was when I put that in my book, and, and I told uh, Nick about it, and he has a copy of the book. But he loves that, because it, it shows so much about Oakland. Mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, you know, t Greeks, Italians, everybody else, they had to live wherever they could and could afford to live. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but he did live further down. And, uh, but it, 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 and here he is a senator now. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what's great about this place, is you see these people, Tom Berkeley, you have the Tom Berkeley Way now named after him. I, work, I went to work for his law office when I was 18 years old out of high school. Hmm. Yeah, top guy. I mean, he just he started a, the Post newspaper, which is running today. Very wonderful guy. And these were the guys that we had. And the political guys, all of the political, all the lawyers, judges that you see sitting now, came through Tom Berkeley's office. Mm -hmm. He trained them. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's really, it, if people don't know these things. And I don't know if Tom has written a book about it yet. Mm -hmm. But they all went there. He taught them what to do, what not to do. He told them where the boundaries were. And it was great, really. And they were all under a man by the name of D.G. Gibson, who no one ever talks about and we very rarely see. But he trained all the, the black judges and lawyers you see today. You, name, you say D.G. Gibson and they bow. Hmm. 
because he was a great mental strategist and taught them how to cut through the lines. And he's the one that designed how Byron would be elected, could be elected mm. uh, as, a, as the first black assemblyman and, and went off like um, without a hitch. Well, it's fascinating history. Yeah. You know, and learning about kind of the street names and who they refer to. Exactly. And the, the stories of these different individuals is just it's fascinating. It's fascinating. A lot of Oakland history, I think, is not really known. No, it's and not. Kind of understood, um, especially with the changes that are going on in yeah. Oakland now and mm -hmm. how quickly things continue to kind of mm -hmm. uh, move in different directions. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important to look back at this history and understand it is. kind of where Oakland has come from. That's you know, right. You mentioned the, um, the post. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, you're going to be featured on the wall here at the Alice Street. Yeah, Hill, uh huh, right? uh huh. And right next to you is actually another newsman, oh, boy. Chauncey Bailey. I'm so glad you brought up Chauncey. I was going to talk about him next. First of all, when I saw that I was sit my I'm going to be beside Chauncey, uh, Chauncey was scheduled to do an interview on our TV show the, the next, it was the same morning, I think, that he got shot. We, he was going to be on at one o'clock that day or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, Chauncey Bailey worked for the Post, and he's one of the guys that Chauncey knew no fear. He was incredible. And so a young man called me up and said, well, when you're going to do those murals, he said, I hope you'll talk to the guy and tell him about Chauncey Bailey. I said, well, I think he's only doing people who live on, uh, lived on Alice Street. And he said, yes, yeah, but Chauncey died on Alice Street. And that is true. And then I called you, and you told me, don't worry, Jerry, we've already got him up there, you know. And I was so happy to call this guy back, because he was a very special person. He died right on that corner from where we're standing. We could, I could point to it. Right. It's right over there on that corner, diametric. So there are a lot of people that have given their lives for, for Oakland. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, we just, like I said, in my book, I talked about all the special people in sports, Kurt Flood, hmm. uh, all these great athletes, Barbara Lee, and we're talking about Ron Delano. All these people came out of they came out of West Oakland. Right. Yeah, I mean it's it's unreal. What it, I I call us the oak tree, because one guy loved Oakland so much he he, he wanted us. He got all the writers around and said, I want us to write a, an anthology. It's going to be about Oakland is a holy city. Hmm. Now, did you do you like that title? Oh, it's great. I started writing about it, and I thought about. The people that were giant people, that's what they were because of the oak trees. See, we are what it is we're surrounded with. I said, well, Oakland tells us who we are. Mm -hmm. We're the oak trees, and I, think, and I, and I wrote a, a piece for his book. Mm -hmm. And I said, and the, and the little children are the baby acorns, you know, because that's what Oakland is. Oakland is known for its trees. And, of course, people all over the world, when they want to build something sturdy, the only kind of wood they ask for is oak. That's right. And that represents who we are. We're strong, we're mighty, we make friends, and by mind you, I still have the f same friends I had when I was a kid. Hmm. In the third grade, I have a friend right now that's alive, a couple of years younger than me, uh, went to the same schools. We grew up, stayed in touch, and we are still friends with all of the people that we had a circle with. Some of them are Japanese, Chinese, like I said, Italian, Nick Petrus, and uh, I think we had the thing that's so important to make a, that made this country so great. When the immigrants came, they had a chance to do something. And now a lot of black people, like I said, Tom Berkeley was given a chance, Byron Rumford, mm -hmm. Lionel Wilson came here. And I, the history of black people coming to Oakland is because the Southern Pacific wanted to start their line here, mm -hmm. and they went to, to uh, New Orleans, and they wanted only the New Orleans people to come run those railroads, because they knew uh, the work ethic was there and so forth. And was, um, Anyway, they came here, and they are the black people who actually were the first people who came here to Oakland. They came sponsored by the Southern Pacific. They became the waiters, the porters, the cooks, I think even the red caps and so forth. So that's the history of that. And they've, they have preserved that 16th Street Station, I'm so glad to know, mm -hmm. that's down in West Oakland. Right. The 16th Street Station helped build Oakland. Mm -hmm. And it's still there, and I'm glad they're going to keep it there. Oh, yeah. Well, it's so interesting to talk to you about all this history uh -huh. and to um, <clears throat> learn more you know, in the process of doing this mm -hmm. documentary mm -hmm. about Oakland history. Um, you know, one thing I'd like to ask you is just 
now what what you're up to i mean um oh, you're you're getting painted up on this mural i know um, it, we're actually i'm watching your uh you know features being painted uh-huh, on your uh-huh, face uh-huh. And behind you here uh-huh. um uh you know we're excited to be interviewing you yeah, today in front of the yeah. wall um and also you're going to be celebrating a birthday yes i'll be celebrating my 90th birthday uh january 3rd night well what is it uh, 2015 that's right. And uh, my son Michael's born January 2nd, and Ted's born January 5th, same week. And my youngest is born uh, December 21st. So I have a bunch of little goats that run up the hill. <laughs> Capricorns. Capricorns. That's right. And, we're, and they, say, they always say that we're very uh, old when we're young and young when we're old. And I think we hold up pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll well. say <laughs> And, um, and so, what are some highlights in terms of uh, things? Well, you're everything's on? sort of breaking for me. Going to be in September. Okay. I'm going to be part of an anthology, and it gives me a figure. Before I talk about that, I'm hoping somebody will do an anthology on how happy black people were growing up in Oakland. That hasn't been done yet by different writers or different authors, people talking to people, being interviewed, and put it in a book and tell people this is who we were hmm. and we were happy. But uh, I'm going to be in an anthology that's um, um, got women, that it's, it's going to be integrated, it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, Asians, uh, whites, it started out to, to be black women, and I think the other women saw what we were talking about, which is going to be called em, empowering women, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's uh, going to be a wonderful thing. Each one of us will do part of the anthology, and so uh, uh, it's it's called Ariel Rising, A R I E L. It's at the publishers as we speak, and one of the contributors is the High Commissioner of South Africa, who is a woman mm -hmm. who fought with. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, Nelson, Mandela. Nelson Mandela in South Africa to free black people. Mm -hmm. So she's part of it. And uh, But all these women are from all over the world and I'm the only one from the Bay Area so I'm so proud because we're going to be talking about empowerment of women and, and now it started out as black women now it's we've, other women saw where we want to be included mm -hmm. and they are and uh, the, it's at the publishers as we speak. That's the first thing. Congratulations. And thank you. And then I've been asked to join uh, 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 by uh, Elnora, uh, the president. Uh, she's the president over at uh, Laney College. Uh, Elnora Webb has invited me uh, to be a part of uh, uh, setting up a uh, women's department at Laney College. Fantastic. Yes, and I'm so excited because I have so many ideas about empowering women that, you know, uh, doing the book, this is just perfect, doing that, and then I'm going to be working in Berkeley with some people there uh, that I was just invited to sit on a board with them, and they're going to be trying to fund and get money for a huge home or something or a building mm -hmm. that will give these young black children some place to go after school and I am so proud to be a part of that because that's part of the problem mm -hmm. see there they can do their dance they can do exactly what we do at Malanga Cascola they they have a place to go and these are talented kids I'm telling you, they really are they just need a place to try and do their little James Brown or, or <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. All the new dances. All the new dances. Yeah. And, uh, well, that, that's a great uh, segue to talk yeah. about the Malanga Caskill Lord Center for the Arts. Oh, just yeah. For a moment and, uh, yeah. About, you know, this, this uh, wall here is mm -hmm. really reflecting the intersection of 14th and Alice, focusing on uh, two important institutions, mm -hmm. the Malanga Caskill Lord Center mm -hmm. for the Arts and then Hotel Oakland. Mm -hmm. um, hotel Oakland's a hundred year old uh, building here right. in Oakland, the right. first hotel in Oakland. Mm -hmm. Housed a lot of the American presidents that came here early on. Oh, was, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, the Roosevelt's uh, yeah. uh, stayed there. Oh my as gosh. Well as a couple other American presidents uh -huh. that visited Oakland. Uh -huh. um, it currently houses um, low income Chinese Americans. Right. Students. Did they buy, I think they bought the building, did they? Well, the, the owner has kind of turned it into that type of Yeah, business. it's a beautiful view. They keep it beautifully done. It's a beautiful building. Beautiful. Yeah, inside yeah. is just phenomenal. I bet it is. And so a lot of the features that you see in the mural are actually pulled from the um, features of the, of the mm -hmm. building itself, mm -hmm. as well as the Milonga Castle Lord Center oh, for the Arts, right. which, um, you know, houses 
more African diasporic arts um, right. and dance than right. any other building in the country. Right. So it's really a, a, a important building and this intersection um, of different types of cultures and, right. and arts and community is really what this mural is all about. So right. again, such an honor to have oh. you up on the wall. Oh, thank you. So but you know, before we go, I want to make sure we know who Malanga Cascalard was. Oh, sure. He was a drummer and a dancer from Africa. That's right. And he died in a, a very quick accident that nobody expected mm -hmm. and they went to, to Jerry Brown who was mayor of the city at that That's time right. and they said we would like uh, the Alice Arts Center to be renamed after Malanga Cascalard so now it is the only major building in all of this country named after an African hmm. we have that honor there's no other building yes. and that's from Michael who ran that building when that went, went down, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. he said that, we, he says, Mom, this is the only building named after an African. So all that wonderful stuff is here. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. And it's so, been so nice talking to you. Oh, it's been great talking yeah. to you. Yeah, so Thanks let's so look much. at this wonderful, miraculous thing that's going to go up yeah. and hope that people take it from here and realize that we have something going in Oakland uh, besides uh, people shooting each other, which we get a lot of coverage on. We're also growing a brand new Oakland here, and it's going to be very beautiful. And it's going to be interracial. It's going to be people who love each other. Mm -hmm. And we have a beautiful place here because people come here for the weather. It's like this beautiful weather today where it's snowing and it's raining and whatever else, everywhere else. Look at the day we have here today. And I thank God every day for Oakland. I love it very much. Oakland loves you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> nice you. to be interviewed by you. Great talking. All right. Hi, this is Desi Mundo. I'm the founder and director of the Community Rejuvenation Project here at the Alice Street Mural Project uh, at 14th and Alice. And we're standing in front of the portrait of Jerry Lange that's going up right now. Uh, and I'm kind of the primary artist on, on this portion of the piece. Um, but this is a collaboration between myself and Pancho Pescador of uh, CRP Bay Area. And um, basically, uh, we actually, you know, looked up uh, this photo of Jerry um, looking for uh, kind of photos of movement. So um, she was actually sitting down, but she has her hand out. So her hand is going to be coming uh, in front of Chauncey Bailey and uh, behind the, uh, the horn of Khalil Shahid. So she's going to be interacting with a lot of the other images in this piece. Um, the way this was done was we started out um, preparing these two walls that we're doing right now uh, using a projector and the projector uh, helps us get everything into proportion and placed correctly kind of from the outset so that we don't have to go back and re-measure things or just draw it from scratch and we can draw things just freehand off the fly but um, this increases our efficiency and um, the accuracy of the work that we're creating and then from there we take uh, photos the photos that we've been, uh, collaged together and we look at them and figure out um, you know kind of where people's fe features are and draw them in, color them, blend the colors, highlight it, shadow it and we're done. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process especially using the projector. We usually don't have to go back and forth uh, moving you know the cheek out or the lips in or you know, we do a little bit of that regardless. Um, so this piece, before uh, Jerry got here today, we had colored in her shirt. Actually, before she leaves, we're going to ask her if she wants anything done to her shirt because it's a little bit flat and plain right now. Uh, and we had colored in, like done the basics on her hair and even like the first kind of uh, skin tone, one of the lighter skin tones. And while she was being interviewed, I was putting in progressively darker skin tones and you know kind of cutting them back to make the lines smooth and we're 
Most of the basics right now are colored in, but there's a lot of smoothing out that's going to happen. Um, we're going to adjust some of the, the shadows to, uh, and highlights to make it more accurate and to make her kind of lively. Um, and that's basically how the piece gets done. You know, we just kind of, um, with the spray paint, it, it gets applied quickly and it dries quickly. So it doesn't take a long time if we want to put, say, this tone of brown and then cut it back a little bit with a lighter tone. Um, we were able to do that very fast. So um, that's the beauty of this tool that we use. We're aerosol writers. We come from the writing community. We come from simple letters like that to elaborate. Uh, works done with spray paint. So you could call spray, pa spray can artists, urban calligraphers, or aerosol writers. Um, but that's the, the lineage that goes back to the subway paintings in New York City. And our lineage goes back to both Chicago, where I'm from, and the pioneers of New York City, including uh, the, the true masters and innovators such as Phase 2 and Vulcan. Um, I also learned a lot of my portrait artwork from uh, um, uh, artists in my crew in Chicago, such as Rafa, and uh, I give credit also to my teacher Zor, and uh, to uh, Raven and G-Tech uh, uh, and Nike, who all had a, a strong influence on me. These are artists out of Chicago that uh, I grew up learning from and appreciate. And um, let's see, what else can we say about Jerry? I mean, really, like. The trickiest part of painting this is just that we have this uh, uh, drain pipe right in the middle of it. So that makes it really difficult to figure out like some of the curves in her nose and her mouth. And I think her mouth looks a little lopsided right now. I'm going to spend some time getting those lines really smooth and, um, and, and working out her nose a little bit more. And the drain pipe definitely uh, adds an uh, additional challenge. But again, coming from painting on, you know, uh, all different types of walls and stuff like that, um, it's just part of the, it's just part of the territory when you're a public artist to, to to work around these features. I mean, there's also like a six-inch dip uh, where her arm goes that we're going to have to kind of figure out um, as we proceed. Um, but overall, you know. Just excited to be painting her and learning a little bit from her. I get to come back and watch the interviews that Spencer uh, conducted with her and really uh, learn a lot of this history about this, this corner, 14th and Alice. Uh, it's truly a dynamic corner. Um, and, and Oakland's history is so deep and so vibrant. But this particular location has been particularly important. And um, given we took on the task of painting here so we, we felt a, a responsibility to the community to um, really tell the story that uh, of the people around here this is also um, a lot of the history around here has really gone unrecognized the Malanga Cascalore Center for the Arts is the the largest dance uh, home for African diaspora dance and drumming in the United States and it, it's really not that story, people, you can walk by it every day and kind of hear the drums and you still really don't know what's going on. And likewise, Hotel Oakland is another place that really doesn't get the recognition uh, of, of the history. And so this public artwork helps tell that story and helps uh, protect some of the legacies as new people move in that they know that there's a history here and uh, a community that's been established for a long time. A lot of what happens in the gentrification process is that people move in and they literally look around and don't see anything even though it's right in front of their face. And we're, we're experiencing that in West Oakland and East Oakland and downtown Oakland and we wanted to you know, kind of help place mark some of this history. We, we've acknowledged from the beginning that this history is so deep and so, uh, so vast and so diverse that we're not telling the whole story, but we're really lucky to have people like Jerry that have been around for a long time, uh, sharing their wisdom and, um, you know, Learn, you know, I, I had the fortunate uh, of meeting Khalil Shahid before he passed away, and I interviewed him um, about 10 years ago. Uh, so I, you know, got to have a sense of the importance of his work. And everybody in here, uh, one way or another, has a, like a, a significance to the community. It's not 
a comprehensive story, um, but it's a place marker of some of the important people. We want to actually go on from this project and make more place markers and tell more stories of this community that's Oakland um, so that we can you know, really acknowledge these people. It's a, it's a really important way to celebrate the vibrancy of uh, Oakland's history. You know, I think the next big project I want to do is uh, Oakland Boogaloo uh, and, and, and talking about these dance forms that came out of Oakland that are more indigenous to Oakland than the A's, you know, but the A's get more celebration, but realistically the contribution of Boogaloo to dance culture, modern dance culture, is tremendous and no one's talked about it up to this point. So our next big project is probably going to be hopefully around, centered around that. But there's also like, as we've been working here, we've been connecting with all these different communities and wanting to celebrate uh, in more specific terms the work of different people uh, in those communities. And so some of the people that may get left out of this will be uh, acknowledged and celebrated in the next work. So the work of, of, of public art keeps going. Hi, my name is Pancho Pescador. I'm a visual artist from Santiago, Chile. I've been living here in the Bay Area the last 20 years and the last 12 in Oakland. Um, I'm very happy and excited to be part of this Alice Street uh, mural project uh, that has been one of our probably the most challenging project to date uh, in, in, in different senses, in the, in the artistic sense, uh, just to um, get this uh, image uh, together with all these uh, people that we value and is very uh, important for the community. We have to conduct six months of interviews um, and then working together with Desi just designing uh, the mural and, and, and being agree that uh, how it should look because obviously we have differences and we are coming from different backgrounds. My background is a fine artist. Uh, I was trained in Chile as a fine artist. Uh, I painted a couple murals when I was in high school, but and then I stopped for probably over 15 years until I got here and through Community Rejuvenation Project, I started painting and learning the aerosol culture and, and start working on walls in the streets, which is changed my life to tell you the truth uh, because I was like kind of the, the easel painter, the studio painter, isolated. I didn't know that many people. When I start painting outdoors in the street, it changed my life in the sense that I have direct communication with the people and I have a straight immediate feedback that I didn't have with my canvas paintings. So that, that was a, a, a awesome, and also the, the, the sense of being able to transform a, a place um, from blight to colors and full of light, something that represents the community. And, and it's, for me, it's straight magic. And, and I'm glad that I'm part of this movement since there is many more people uh, and many more people that I respect painting here in Oakland. And, and some of them that I consider my teachers. Um, and um, so we influence, uh, I've been influenced for, by the culture here and uh, to the point where, you know, I'm a hybrid. Um, I, I still do canvases, uh, but I mostly paint murals now. Um, this mural also, um, it's been challenge uh, challenging in the in the aspects of uh, um, getting it right and 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 just deciding who should be here so all the interviews um, that Spencer uh, conduct were to figure out who should be who should we honor um, this is some of the people that we came out and I we know that we are short and there is so many awesome people uh, still uh, uh, in the center in both places and Oakland, Hotel Oakland, uh, but uh, we feel that 
the names that came up more regularly are are people are the, that uh, we paint in the wall. Even though some of the of the characters, some of the people that are in the wall are not necessarily um, very uh, well known. There is some activist, Malonga in the center is the centerpiece. Uh, um, the um, you know the elder playing the drum, the Ohlone elder playing the drum the Chinese dragon and the Chinese lion in each side, uh, the eyes depicting the past of the Bay Area, uh, uh, the pristine nature when the Lonnie were living around here, and then it is another image of um, Chinatown at uh, the beginning of the century. Um, also we have uh, uh, dancers, we got Carla service, um, and many activists from the community uh, rallying around different issues. Uh, uh, some of the images are about uh, Save the Alice, uh, when Jerry Brown tried to close the center. Uh, there were a lot of manifestations and protests and marches and rallies uh, to fight that back. And then even the Occupy movement and the Oscar Grant um, um, uh, protests are depicted in the wall. Um, I would love to um, to see this happening. I mean, it's happening already in Oakland, but I I would like that the city stand uh, in in a strong position uh, to support uh, visual artists, street artists, muralist artists that uh, we are trying to work, make this city better and, uh, and a beautiful place.